Badgers, caves, warfare, goblins, no, gnomes. Hi everyone, um, <laughs> Shmaby here, and today I wanted to talk about something that I've read completely on a whim, completely unrelated to October, all things spooky, <laughs> and this is just something that I want to recommend. With a few caveats, of course. Today we are talking about the God of Gnomes. God of Gnomes is a lit RPG book, an indie title, by Demi Harper. What's it about? First of all, what's lit RPG? Well, lit RPG or literary RPG is imagine if you have a tabletop role-playing session or experience and you consume it as a book. So almost like a let's play in written form. Super brief summary. The main protagonist is a god core. A god core is a being that has been reincarnated as a gem of sorts, and they serve as a core, a building block for civilizations. So in this world, essentially, every civilization has a god core, and a god core benefits from its worshippers and passively or actively contributes to their prosperity. And that's about it. The plot is very simple. It's all about progression here. With lit RPGs, there's always this balancing act of just how much video game abstraction is told explicitly, how much is too much. And by abstraction, I mean there's this underlying disconnect of game mechanics. You have things like interface bars, filling and emptying, and uh, UI elements, things like that. Thankfully, God of Gnomes answers this question with just enough. I've struggled with gaming inspired novels in the past, and I think that lit RPG books go even further from D&D campaigns. Uh, titles like The Land by Alrion Kong or Ascend Online by Luke Chmilenko, I think, wrote it. This here, I think, is a revelation of sorts, not to be dramatic. The book Twitter Sphere was talking about it. Uh, it released two weeks ago. The cover was very fun. A gnome riding a badger, you'll see it on a thumbnail. And I was in a mood of something short and light, so I took the plunge and bought it. So what I expected? I expected a self-aware romp, uh, probably first-person point of view, which is very common for lit RPGs. And I've talked about my um, misgivings about first-person point of view in the past. But uh, with lit RPGs, I think that even though I don't like them much, um, I do see why it's used so widely. Since it is so much close to gaming and gaming culture. You do want to be immersed as much as possible, as if you are reading to reading through and living through this world you're thrown into. And I also expected a lot of pop culture references because they also tend to be present in a lot of similar work. They're present in lit RPGs. They're present in D&D um, &D campaign inspired books as well but what I got well I don't think it was self-aware and thankfully it did not have any pop culture references at least not that I noticed it stood on its own 
So in conclusion, what I liked, well, the appeal of this subgenre is the satisfactory feeling of progression. And the author maintained the small scale of the narrative. So we have a god core, the titular god core, uh, nicknamed Cory. He is a an entity, a god, a deity, demigod, whatever you like, who is managing a small village of gnomes. It's like a microcosm of civilization. But you also have this angle of gathering resources, which is very satisfactory to read about. The descriptions are well done, and since the pace was so closely tied to progression, it kept it on track the whole time. Just let's gather a few things that I disliked. Mm, nothing major, but there are some inconsistencies with the mechanics and the presentation of Corey's vision. For example, he doesn't know or understand what the stars are, and yet he casually mentions using different interfaces. Um, I quote, looking at an interface I haven't seen before. And there are small parts like that, and they did st st stood up to me. And since the protagonist could not talk to his worshippers directly, the dialogue revolved around interaction with his assistant character, uh, a sprite of some sort. And the dialogue between Corey, the protagonist, and his assistant was pretty juvenile, to be honest pretty poorly written. And since there is no other dialogue apart from occasional spats between the protagonist and the rival core, the antagonist, that really stood out. So in conclusion, if I had to give it a score, which I did, uh, I'd say it's four out of five, if you're into lit RPGs. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.